So that's when it's time for you to roll. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Alexi Harrigan is going to take over from here. We call her Alexi. She's absolutely awesome. You guys are about to get a whole lot of information. This is the part because I know your kids are driving you crazy. Your kids are going crazier than, than cat scratch fever in your house right now. I get it. So I bought in an expert, somebody who understands how to deal with kids and harness that energy and keep you from like, you know, having really, really, really late term abortions. Mm-hmm. With your 15 year old. I'm still. <laughs> all right, Lexi, I'm going to leave you to it, man. Have fun. All right. Thanks, Dave. Peace all right. Out. Sounds okay. good. Good evening, everybody. Um, so once again, my name is Alexia. Um, I am the co-founder and owner of CJ's Busy Box, which is a Bible-based craft subscription box for kids, uh, toddlers, and preschoolers. You can catch our website at cjsbusybox.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and Pinterest at CJ's Busy Box. So tonight we're going to talk about how to use creativity to connect and communicate with your kids and help them build resilience. So first, what is creativity? And basically, creativity is the ability to transcend traditional ideas, rules, patterns, or relationships, and to create meaningful new ideas, forms, methods, or interpretations. There's multiple types of creativity, including music, art, drawing, painting, coloring, building, writing, photography, even gardening, sewing and dance. These type of things are the things that you do and you get in the flow. You know, when you just like start zoning out and you lose track of time because you're just enjoying it so much. Now, creativity affects the brain in a very special way. When you're performing a creative activity, such as like crafting or even gardening, it releases dopamine in the brain, which is a natural antidepressant. It also helps reduce anxiety, depression and stress, and it can also help you even process trauma. One of the things that it also does is it helps boost immune system. I know that sounds weird, but it really can do that. Studies have shown that daily writing and listening to music can also help increase the, produ the production of the body's lymphocytic cells, which are essential in the immune system. So at this point, we need all the help we can get to, to build our immune systems. So getting creative is one of the ways you can do that. With children, it helps them explore and understand their world and also create new connections and develop new and deeper understanding. And it also can encourage positive relationships and build self-esteem. So you might be thinking, I'm really not a crafty person or I'm not creative and that's okay. You don't have to be. The main thing is focusing on the process of creation rather than the outcome. It doesn't have to be perfect. The simple fact that you're creating something will open you up to all the benefits <laughs> of creativity. Maya Angelou says, that you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. Now, creativity is very powerful because it can help you connect with not just yourself, but also with your kids. Connection fosters creativity and creativity fosters connection. Right now, parents are struggling not just to be parents and providers, but also teachers. Many Parents may have feelings of self-doubt, feeling overwhelmed with all these increasing demands of work, life, and family. You may feel like, because I'm not able to really teach my kids or spend the time that I need to, I may be a bad parent or whatever, but life is just hard right now. How can you be a good mommy teacher and a good daddy teacher when they've completely changed math? I mean, to quote Mr. Incredible, math is math and you can't change math but somehow they've done it. It's okay to not know everything. Be open about that with your kids. Talk about those things. Use that as an opportunity to learn together and find solutions together with your child. And remember, every second of every day doesn't have to be scheduled. I know a lot of you are at home with your kids right now and you've got schoolwork and homework and all these things, but every second of the day doesn't have to be scheduled. Alone time is key for development, self-sufficiency, 
independence, and even subconscious processing. Allow time for your kids to do independent creativities, creative activities. Imaginative play is key for uh, kids' development, like playing with dolls, action figures, stuffed animals, even having imaginary friends, drawing, painting, coloring, building. Kids use these types of tools and activities to process the changes in the world around them. In addition to that, doing creative activities with your kids will allow you to spend quality time with them. It allows you to get to know them and help you better understand how they think, how they play, even you can figure out what their interests are. It's about enjoying the discovery process with them. I remember having a conversation with my niece, Cami, a couple years ago. And at that time, she was all about Care Bears. I can't even tell you how many Care Bears she had. She had so many. And I was asking her what she wanted for Christmas. And I was like, oh, you want some Care Bears? And she was like, oh no, Auntie Lexi. I am four now, I am a big girl. Care Bears are for babies. I like Barbies now. <laughs> And I just had to laugh. I said, oh, okay, let me know something. Because really, kids change so quickly, it's important to stay connected as they change. So you have to spend that time with them so you can find out that they're too big for Care Bears now and they're on to Barbies. <laughs> now, as you use creativity to connect with your kids, it's also essential for it to pave the way for more open communication with them. Ask them open-ended questions and allow them time to think and respond. Doing creative activities with them helps them learn about collaboration and listening to other people's perspectives and also how to work with other people. All of these things are vital life skills that help them learn and navigate the world. One fun creative activity that you can do with your family is called Pass the Drawing. One person begins to draw or color a picture and then passes it to the next person to add something to it. And as you do that, you're able to teach your kids about collaboration and working with other people. Additionally, if you're a family of four, you can make it a fun thing and have everybody start their own drawing and then pass it to the left or pass it to the right. And as it goes around the circle, everybody's adding their own uh, creative spin on it in a way that now you've all created something together and it'd be really fun to see what awesome things you come up with. Additionally, creativity and doing creative activities creates an openness and a relaxed environment that can aid in having difficult or uncomfortable conversations. As we all try to adapt and deal with the many changes that are happening in our world with this coronavirus pandemic, kids are also trying to process these changes. Many kids are asking really hard questions like, when, why can't we go to restaurants? Why can't I go see my friends? Why can't I go to school? Why are you my teacher? I like my other teacher better. These questions can be tough to answer, but utilizing creat creative activities can help lighten an already stressful conversation. An activity that you can do is have your kids draw themselves and their feelings. Happy faces, sad faces, angry faces, scared faces, all these things will help you tune in to how they're feeling and help open up an opportunity for you to talk about those feelings with them. Another thing that creativity does is that it helps build resilience. Resilience is about bouncing back, problem solving. It's about using your resources and your strengths to overcome obstacles and setbacks. Resilience helps kids manage their feelings and stress and as well as anxiety in times of uncertainty. And right now we're living in a time of complete uncertainty. What do you do when life gives you lemons? How many possibilities or solutions can you come up with to answer this question? Creativity builds resilience by helping kids to develop social competence, autonomy, and problem solving techniques. When you're utilizing creativity and doing creative activities with your kids, they'll take their problem solving cues from you. They will learn from you how to tackle challenges, make mistakes, how to be flexible and open to other possibilities and alternate solutions. You are their model. 
let's not just make lemonade with these lemons. Let's make a lemon meringue pie or a line of lemon-based skincare products or household cleaning products with lemons. Resilience is all about possibilities. Additionally, it's really important to be free to make mistakes. You're not gonna get it right every time and that's okay. Oftentimes doing creative activities ends up being messy or not exactly what we intended to be and that's okay. Understanding that you are the model for your kids. How you deal with stress is how they learn how to deal with stress. How you tackle obstacles and problem solve is how they will learn how to tackle problems and problem solve. So be a, being a good example, if you're stressed out and crumbling under the pressure, that's how they're gonna learn. So creativity can help you deal with your own stress, your own um, anxiety, and you can help them deal with their stress as well as their anxiety. Now, because we all make mistakes, and it's okay to make mistakes, being open to that and talking about that helps them be more self-confident in trying again. It's really okay. The great thing about when we make mistakes is that we've learned a way not to do something. There's still a lesson learned. So when I was a kid, my niece and I, who are, we we're close in age, we were, uh, we wanted to make cookies. We wanted to make peppermint cookies. So I called my mom and asked her if it was okay and asked her where the oil was. So she told us it was in the cabinet. So we went and got it. We made our cookies. We added our peppermint and our red food coloring and we put them in the oven. And we're super excited about eating these cookies that we made. So once they were done, we pulled them out, barely waited till they were cool enough to eat and took a really big bite of these cookies. And as we were eating them, they didn't taste quite right. And we were like, hmm, why did these cookies taste like chicken? And we weren't really sure where we went wrong in our recipe. But when my mom came home and she tasted the cookies, she said, your cookies taste like chicken. What did you do? We said, we put everything in the recipe that we thought we were supposed to. And she said, what oil did you use? Come to find out, instead of using the vegetable oil, we took the leftover fried chicken oil and made cookies with that. Well, we definitely had to learn from that mistake. And I tell you, every time we've made cookies after that, we use the right oil, but it was okay. We, we learned a lesson and one of the greatest results of that was we had a really, really awesome memory that we still laugh about today. Again, it's not about being perfect. It's about enjoying the process. I just want to encourage all of you to fall in love with the process of creating. Your kids are following your lead. You're a good parent and even though life may seem very overwhelming right now. You're doing good. I just want to encourage you, just like Dory said in the movie Finding Nemo, just keep swimming. Keep creating, keep connecting, and keep communicating because your kids are watching. So that's all I have for you tonight. I hope that it's helpful. I hope that you guys um, start creating and connecting and communicating with your kids. And as a result, you'll have much more resilient kids that will be able to bounce back from all the setbacks and uncertainty that we have in this world right now. My name is Alexia. You can find me on cjsbusybox.com. I'm also on Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Facebook at cjsbusybox. Um, if you go to cjsbusybox.com, we have a free download of a creativity builder guide. So all you have to do is enter your email address and the download will pop up so you can have that free creativity uh, builder guide. So go to our website, cjsbusybox.com for that download. Again, we have um, also a Bible-based subscription box for kids. 
ages two to five, so generally toddlers and preschoolers. Um, I hope you found out found this information to be helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me either on social media or through our website. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, we also put out videos, uh, video content as well as other downloads. So be checking our website for that as well. We hope you have a wonderful night and stay healthy.